Chapter 16 Dominic could hardly believe his ears. Salvatore, a murderer? The boys were quick to tell the priest of their incident with Tabera Rendizzi earlier that day. They were ashamed to admit that they had been stealing again in the orchard, but they explained how Rendizzi had grabbed his chest and fallen before them. We had only meant to take enough fruit to satisfy, satisfy our stomachs, Francesco explained. We meant no one any harm. Father Tommaso listened to all they had to say. Then he turned back, turned to look out the window. Dominic followed his gaze to see old Angelina wringing her hands and shaking her head as she waited at the window. Finally, Father Tommaso took them, turned back to them and spoke. Angelina heard this news as she did her, dishwash, her washing at the well. That means the entire village will have heard of it. You haven't much time. You must leave at once. But father, you don't think I'm a murderer, do you? Salvatore demanded. There are a great many things that I do not know, Father Tommaso sighed. But I am a poor village priest. There is much that escapes me in this big world, but if I know anything, it is the hearts of those who kneel in my church. I have known you boys since you wore your baby dresses. I dipped your heads in the holy water. I know you are not murderers, but I also know the wrath of the padrone. He is a vindictive man, and there will be no reasoning with him. If his son has accused you of this crime and the others to verify and has others to verify his story, you are in grave danger. He st he will want an eye for an eye. But if Salvatore gets a good lawyer, he will get off, Dominic said, thinking of all the courtroom dramas he had watched on television. The padrone is all the law that rules this village, Father Tommaso interrupted. We cannot risk Salvatore's life. They could throw him into a prison down in Napoli, and he would never live to see sunlight again. The priest's face suddenly brightened. Unless he were to go to Napoli himself. The ship that I told you about is waiting in the harbor as we speak. Thankfully, these tickets only just arrived, and I haven't had the chance to tell anyone else about them. You'd all be safe in America, Francesco, and your brothers would have a good life there. Dominic watched as Francesco's eyes filled with tears. How, he asked, how would they separate us? The room grew suddenly still as they all waited for Father Tommaso's answer. The two youngest, Antonio and Salvatore, are to go to New Jersey. And Francesco, they've found a family for you in New York. They've even found work for you already, building roads. It's a great opportunity. I don't want to live away from Francesco, Antonio cried. You must be brave, Antonio, Father Tommaso said, placing his big hand on Antonio's map of gold, mop of gold, golden curls. These two places, New York and New Jersey, are not a great distance apart. Francesco can visit you. Your brother is doing what is best for all of you. You must be brave. And you best leave now so you can make it to the harbor by tomorrow morning, Father Tommaso continued as he searched his desk for a pen and paper. Stay off the main road and keep well hidden. I will stay here and try to divert them. But how? Aha! he cried, clapping his hands. Mention Rome to me, he suddenly demanded. What? Francesco asked. Rome! Rome! Father Tommaso cried. Mention Rome! Rome? Molto bene, very good, the priest cried. I will tell them that when I saw you, that I saw you, and yes, you mentioned Rome. Always best to have the truth on your side. His eyes twinkled as he smiled. Se Dio vuole, God willing, I will meet up with you in Napoli tomorrow. He picked up his pen and began to write. Go to the chest, Francesco, he ordered without looking up, and take your shoes and good shirts. You will need them for the journey. It's lucky that you left them here for mass and not in the barn. They're sure to be looking for you there. Oh, and take your mama's rosary beads as well. Francesco lifted a little wooden chest by the door and pulled out a strand of worn wooden rosary beads, a pair of old leather shoes, and an empty sock, excuse me, empty cloth sack. He reached back into the chest, pulling out three folded shirts and quickly threw them into the sack. Once you reach Napoli, find Pascal, the clam seller. Father Tommaso instructed, getting to his feet.
He has his stall on the corner of the Via Roma. Tell him that I sent you, and he will direct you to my sister, Signora Drusello's house. Give her this letter. He handed an envelope to Francesco. My sister and her husband will take you in for the night. Grazie, father. Thank you, Francesco whispered. Ah, Francesco, the good priest sighed, coming, from ar coming around the desk and hugging him hard. Look after your brothers. They are good boys. You are all good boys. Oh, you've slipped now and then with your thievery and your wild ways, but deep down there is more goodness than devilry there. I know you will grow to be great men in America. Avaletto will miss you. I will miss you. If all goes well, I will see you off at the boat. Go now, my sons. As he hugged Father Tommaso, Francesco caught sight of Dominic standing all alone. Father, he whispered, turning back to the priest, our friend here was caught in an earthquake down south. He's become a brother to us. Please, Father, can you find him a way to America, too? I'm afraid there is only passage for three, Father Tommaso replied, shaking his head. It has taken me over four years to secure you such generous sponsors. But I shall see what I can do, and maybe some day your friend will be as lucky as you three. For the first time since he had met the brothers, Dominic felt alone. What was to become of him, by himself, in this strange time and place? At least come with us as far as the harbor, Salvatore begged. Dominic nodded his head yes. He was too upset to speak. Antonio clasped Dominic's hands in his and looked up at him sadly. I wish you could come with us, he said. He's so confused from the earthquake, father, Francesco whispered. I don't think he should be alone. Maybe Pascal the clam seller can find work for him on the streets, father Tommaso suggested. After that, we shall have to see what happens. Dominic nodded and bit down on his lip. He was accustomed to living from day to day and seeing what happens. It was how he had lived his whole life. But how could he trust his life to what happens in a strange country almost 100 years back in time? As fearful as he was, he was also overcome with sadness. For the first time in his life, Dominic Cantori had found a family he cared about and who cared about him. Even though the Candiano brothers weren't like his dream family, with a mother and a father and brothers and sisters and a nice house and a sheepdog, these three brothers living in a barn with their goat were the best friends he had ever known. And now he was about to lose them, too.